but it's so good to be here. It's such an honor. I've heard of Shay E for years, for years, my dear friends, uh, fellow composers and flautists and vocalists and friends have taught here for many years. And then, of course, Maestro Bergen is my dear friend. I um, am so grateful to be his sister, his friend, um, and fellow artist. And um, I praise God for this time. How does God introduce himself to us? How did he first introduce himself to us? Was it as Lord? Was it as Savior? Was it as Comforter? Was it as Shepherd? Was it as King? He's all those things and so much more. But in Genesis, he first introduces himself as an artist, as a creative. God is the first and greatest artist. He is the first and greatest musician. God is the most beautiful one, the one who is beauty. And the first and greatest artist created out of nothing all those colors, all those forms, all those shapes. God, the first and greatest musician, composed and created music out of nothing. We think of Johann Sebastian Bach and what he did, incredible. We think of John Coltrane and what he did. But he had notes, he had rhythm, he had dynamics, he had theory. The first and greatest musician created out of no, nothing. And that is the one who is most beautiful. But what is beauty? Beauty is God. And God defines beauty as God's glory. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 7, 27, 4, one thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. When we see beauty, we can trace that beauty back to God and see God as the source of all beauty. The book of Genesis, of course, introduces us to a God who is creative, who is passionate, and a God who delights in creating beauty and delights in the beauty of his creation. We look at God and we look at his art making in the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the hills, the valleys, the plants, the vegetation, the creatures of the land, the creatures of the sea. But then God created male and female in his own image and gave them a responsibility to care for his beautiful creation. The act of creating this art making shows God's mass and vast imagination and supreme power. Imago Dei, the image of God, tells us that all humans are created equal, that God is the creator of all things. And the truth is God alone is the source and substance of true beauty. All right, Ms. Shelley, why are we talking so much about beauty? Because we're going to be talking a lot about it. This week, we're going to talk about does art matter? Does music matter? How do we glorify our Lord in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of grief, in the midst of abandonment, in the midst of joy? How do we continue to reflect the first and great artist, the first and great musician with our creative gifts. God gave each and every one of you the gift of creativity to use in ways that reflect, that do not distort the image of our creator. That alone should have you practicing all day, right, instructors, <laughs> right? But not are we only made in the image of God, we have the capacity to imagine, to create, to enjoy, to cultivate beauty while also caring for beautiful things. God took, takes pure delight in the beauty of his creation and he expresses his enjoyment and delight, so much so that he said, 
it is good. So when you look at someone and view them less than, you are becoming an art critic to the greatest artists. You're saying, that's good. That's good. I got to pick someone I'd know. Uh, can you imagine saying that's not true but but um that's what you are doing when you say oh that's not beautiful that's not particularly in imago day particularly with our fellow human beings he takes the sight and he proclaimed it is good the bible rejoices over the beauty of the created world and we as Christians should and must understand that beauty is an act of God revealing himself in love to us. Of course, when we think of the most beautiful gift, yet the most horrific gift, we think of Calvary. He breathed into us with his own mouth, Adam and Eve and even us. We know that the Lord God formed man and woman from dust and breathed into their nostrils. And we know from Psalms 139, 13 that we are formed um, and woven in our mother's womb. We were. So we are custom made. The God of the universe, the eternal, immortal, invisible, all wise, all knowing God made Sean in his own image in his own hands, and it is good, my dear. <laughs> we are all unique original creation, a stunning creation of art crafted by the first and greatest artists. Beauty created, beauty seen. So yes, we all love beauty and hopefully we all love and serve the most beautiful one. But beauty is essential to life and its spirit. Chasing and searching and creating beauty is a profound disturbance to all that is false, that is all to, that is opposing to God. Example, there was an amazing musician who found herself in Auschwitz. She survived miraculously and went on to have a pretty, uh, accomplished concert career. And in one of the interviews, they said, why didn't you speak out about the trials and the despair and the horror that happened at the Holocaust? She said, I did. I did it with my violin. I spoke of that trauma and of that evil that took place there, building the tension between beauty and ugliness, good and evil. Beauty is essential to life, and it is a form of resistance to all that is false. So we don't always have to protest, sign petitions, or march in the streets, or do other things. Just by, if God has called you, using your creative gifts reflects not only the first and great artist, but it reflects who he is and who he is in your life, and it is a disturbance to the evil one, to all that is false in this world. Because creating brings glory to God. The act of creating also reflects beauty and diversity that God has woven in his creation. And when I was your age, well, yeah, maybe a little younger, um, you know, I was interested in world music and I had to walk, you know, 20 minute walk to the library, hope that the vinyl record was there. If it was there, hope that it wasn't scratched and try and listen to as much. At your fingertip, my loves, at your fingertip is all the music that is around the world. If you love opera, you should wanna know what's going on in Chinese. I personally, Chinese opera is one of my favorites. If you love jazz, what's going on in jazz in Mexico? What's going on with folk music in Ethiopia? How does gospel sound in Russia? I am so excited for you all. You have violinists from around the world. I was dictated who was a good 
violinists who got to play with Mucci and Eugene Ormandy at the Philadelphia Orchestra. Here, you can find other violinists just by your index finger. Search out all God's beauty. Have a world view. Know what's going on so you can experience the diverseness of it. The way that, you know, how blues are sung in Budapest versus Memphis, how the vibrato sounds, the tone, that's all a part of the diversity of God's creation woven into all of us. We, can, we know the patterns of creation, the fall, the redemption, and then one day, the new creation, which we'll get to later. But Genesis, Genesis teaches us that God has made all things and all orders and in, in the order of all things. What am I saying? He's sovereign. He can do what he wants to, how he wants to, when he wants to. And that he's in charge of that good creation. That he has lordship and control and authority. And that he is present in our creative making. So if the first and greatest artist has given you a gift and that through that you're that you bring glory to his name that even in your practicing is not only a, a creative disruption to that's false it is also knowing that he is present in the midst of that in every element of your creative process that's powerful. It changed the way I practice, trust me. But creation establishes God's ownership over all the things in heaven and earth. And so there's no limiting power. There's no controlling of his power. It establishes his authority. But God is not far removed from any of us. For through that direct touch, not something in between, that direct touch, his direct touch of his creative power in our lives, we can create to the glory of God. Christians should be the most exciting, the most powerful, and the best artists on the earth. I've been blessed because of the profound, beautiful genre of jazz to travel the world singing and composing and playing. And I have to say, for 20 years, the church and Christians are the last group of people and place that the world goes looking for, for great art. It wasn't always that way. He has given us that creative. That doesn't mean that those that don't know the Lord aren't creative, but we have that. Francis Safer says something like, the imagination of the Christian should fly above the stars, I'm paraphrasing. That's where we should. When's the last time you imagine? Before you start a piece, do you imagine yourself playing it? Do you take the time to see how many artists have played it? Have you seen their take on it and listen to their interpretation? A lot of people think that in European classical music, there's not a lot of improvisation. Oh, yes, there is. The way you attack the note, the way you release the note, the way you hold the note. And that's your voice, and that's your quote unquote style. When's the last time you imagined what something sounded like and then went to play it, perform it, or even before a concert? He has given us the gift of imagination, of craftsmanship, of beauty. God is involved in improvisational creative acts, and we'll get to that later. Rebecca Herms says this, the gift of creating beauty is the farthest thing from self-glorifying. In its very essence, it is a calling to point people to glorify and worship the most beautiful one, God himself. It is life-giving. When we create, it is an echo of God's glorious creative nature. That doesn't mean you can't have a bad day. That doesn't mean you can't struggle with the peace. It doesn't mean that you, you can't fail, but it's that intent, that spirit, that mindset, that posture that helps us. 
the act of being creative honors our creator who gives us such profound gifts. We're going to spend um, the rest of this week diving into what that looks like um, in different times through different lenses. But creativity like love is should not be a selfish act. It is to show love for God and for one another. My sister was an amazing pianist and at age probably nine o'clock she got to perform for, um, of course now I can't remember his name. He was uh, part of Curtis Institute. Ah, I should have written down. I was like, I won't write that down. I'll remember it. Of course, uh, I'll tell you tomorrow. I can't remember. But he went. she went to perform, perform it. And um, she did well. And she's still on record as the youngest to perform his body of music. Persichetti, very, very percussive, very out kind of. I mean, if you dig that thing, I do. But, um, and she was the youngest. And um, after that, a, a Russian teacher from Curtis said, I want to take Mary Elizabeth under my wing. And what you need to do is I've worked it out with Cunningham Piano. They'll be delivering a piano to put in her bedroom. And she is to wake up and, and go to sleep in the middle of the night. And she said to my mother and father, that piano is to be her God. And my parents said, well, that's not happening. Um, <laughs> But what she was saying is that's what it's going to take to make it, that that has to be your God. Aren't you glad that just even in the act of creating, you are showing people who God is? Not what you produce per se, but in the very act of creating and using his gifts to his glory. That piano is not a God. It's the one who created um, humans and created the piano so that we could reflect it back to God. What does it mean to create in these times? What does it mean to create in the midst of so much strife, so much dissension, so much tension, so much joy, so much sadness, so much hope, so much despair. We will get into that little vignette each day. But I in this time saying, for today and going forward, engage all of life for God's glory, not just your music making. Um, use and continue to develop your creative gifts and use it to the glory of God. The great God, if, if I were him, I would have been like, I'm introducing yourself with Calvary. Look what I did. I died on the cross for your sins. Thanks be to God that I don't have that power or any other human being. But my loves, he introduces himself first as an artist, as a creative. Be passionate, be intentional. Be a good steward of your gifts and play to the glory of God. And even in your mistakes, and I've had many, some on a big, big stages, even in our failures, God still can be glorified. Particularly with jazz because you had that next note to create it. Thanks. But use your gifts to glorify God, the first and greatest artist. And as St. Francis says, preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Let your music, let your creative gifts, both the hope of the Holy Spirit, reflect people and guide them and point them to the first and greatest artist, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I look forward to joining you in rehearsals and hearing you, and I'll see you tomorrow morning.